All right, so we were talking a bit about Peter Pan and Wendy, the trailer uh, that Disney released, and kind of why that movie compared to Hook felt like it was really employing a lot of sort of tokenistic or uh, forced diversity. I like to think of this as like corporate diversity, which is, you know, a very shallow surface level diversity and inclusion that doesn't really actually bring any sort of diverse storytelling or 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 even sensible logical diversity to a, pro- a property it just it just it just is trying to pander to kind of the the current cultural moment and all the activism surrounding like what we think is acceptable in, in entertainment these days um <clears throat> so I, i'll leave that aside i just wanted to kind of like broaden this discussion a little and also focus it in on on like why this matters and and why context matters so much so for instance uh you know peter pan is a, is a fantasy right and uh, and so it really doesn't matter that much if if there's you know this is why I like in Hook you know there's like black and brown and Asian lost boys and it's totally fine nobody even really thought twice about it it's Neverland is a fantasy world right so why was I upset that there are girls in the Lost Boys mainly because I think it it affects the story of Wendy negatively and makes her less special as a character and and her role as uh, as a girl in that story less impactful, right? It kind of misses the point of that story. So context matters here. If, if, if Wendy wasn't such an important figure in that story, there being girls in the Lost Boys wouldn't even matter. So we have seen things like, uh, I think in recent, you know, recently we, we have a couple other fantasies, right? Rings of Power, brought a lot of diversity to Middle Earth, and a lot of people are upset by that. I tried to sort of say, look, it doesn't matter. If they do this right, it'll be fine. Um, I think you're jumping the gun. I think, you know, this comes off as kind of racist if you're freaking out this much about, uh, you know, black hobbits and stuff. But um, but they did it very poorly. <laughs> they handled it really badly. Of course, they handled almost everything pretty badly in that show. And I think, you know, looking at the context of Middle Earth versus something like Narnia uh, is important here. Narnia, I think, because of how C.S. Lewis crafted his stories, uh, his Narnia story specifically, almost as a, I, I don't I don't like this term, but as a metaverse, Narnia is almost a metaverse, right? There's just, there's characters and creatures and, and, and myths from all over the place, right? From all kinds of cultures. You can have I think you could make the most diverse Narnia you want, and it would make total sense in the context of what Lewis was trying to do. And I think he would have been absolutely fine with it, because, again, his is a grab bag fantasy world. Whereas Tolkien's is a very specific, rooted world in history, and in geography, in, in myth, right? Uh, he spent a lot of time building a very elaborate backstory uh, for this world, his world building and his, his linguistic... Uh, approach to this was was extremely deep and and very very specific right uh and so you can have diversity in lord of the rings in in stories that you in you know fan fiction whatever you want to do but there there's a way to do it that would make a lot more sense uh by providing geographical and historical context to that diversity and you could you could just make it up i mean you could have the elves from you know over here all be darker skinned right and you could have you know, you could do you could do that, and you could make it make sense, and you could have it fit that sort of approach that Tolkien took to realism, because there is realism in his fantasy compared to other fantasies, uh, like Narnia, which which abandons realism in a lot of ways. And I was thinking about how uh, two shows that I really enjoy that are historical, how they take such different approaches, and why it matters for each of them. Like, so the two shows I'm talking about are Outlander on Stars and The Great on Hulu. I recommend both of these. The Great is very funny, whereas Outlander is very dark. Outlander is also a fantasy and a romance. It, it deals with uh, this woman, Claire, who is uh, a, a British nurse right after World War II, who visits a town in Scotland with her husband and accidentally transports through these magical stones back into, uh, into Scotland 300 years earlier or 200 years earlier, anyways, during the Jacobin Revolution uh, in Scotland and meets this guy named Jamie Fraser. Falls in love, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's, it's very melodramatic, but it is still rooted in historical realism, even though it's a fantasy about time travel. You know, the, 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 the Scotland she arrives at is, 
The reason it works so well is that it's a very detailed and realistic version of Scotland. Everything about where she is is true to the time, and right down to the historical figures like Bonnie Prince Charlie. Uh, and then, you know, her and Jamie go on all these adventures together. Some of them are really, really messed up and dark, and I wish I could unsee them. Uh, but <laughs> they go to the Caribbean, they go to the Americas, they go to, they go to Carolinas, um, and, you know, we, we deal with all these different historical events. Eventually, you know, they leave the tension between Scotland and, and Britain behind, and we have, you know, you, there's the slave trade in the Americas, there's Native American tribes. So it's not like this is just a white show, but when they're in Scotland, it is very white. And then when they go to other places and encounter other peoples, then we get some, we get more diversity. But it's not really about the diversity; it's about encountering realistic cultures and histories within the context of this fantastical time traveling story. The Great, on the other hand, is not a fantasy. It is, it is a just a, his, a, a historical comedy. But unlike Outlander, it throws realism out the window completely. Nothing about it is true. Other than the, the basic premise in that Catherine goes to Russia from Germany, I believe it's Germany or Austria, um, from, from the Germanic lands and becomes empress, right? Well, they in the retelling, a lot of things are changed, including in a, in a major way, Peter's role, uh, the emperor Peter, um, Peter the third, son of Peter the Great. Uh, the, the, the characters are outlandish. The story is ridiculous. It is extremely, like, raunchy. <laughs> uh, it's it's hilarious. I love The Great, but it is not historically realistic at all. And taking this approach, they just, you know, plenty of the Russians are, uh, the Russian aristocrats even, are black. Uh, and and there is there is a lot of diversity in that show. And it's totally fine, because they're not going for anything realistic. They're, they're not trying to portray this story or this era as anything but this outlandish, almost cartoonish version of Russia. It's a it's a great spoof of the Russian aristocracy, for one thing. Um, it it kind of reminds me a little bit of like uh, the, the Bertie and Jeeves uh, Woodhouse stories, just lampooning the, the, the rich and idiotic. Um, so, so these are two shows that are both histories. One is a fantasy and yet grounded in realism. And so casting adds to that realism if she'd gone back in time and and just had like this you know rainbow coalition of scotsmen in the 1700s it wouldn't have made much sense and it would have thrown us off and then when she later encountered like the slave trade or the native american tribes that would have been odd and and even her like her perspective as a woman in the 20th century although she's very forward thinking for her time uh you know since this is like the 50s when it starts um, she's very progressive and, you know, like is horrified by slavery and all this stuff. So her her reaction to the time she finds herself in is important. And so making it realistic and grounded is important. Context matters. The great, on the other hand, just doesn't matter. It's just it's just total made up fiction. It doesn't it's colorblind. Race has nothing to do with it. Uh, the, Beards are more important than the skin, than skin color in that in that show. It's hilarious. Um, Nicholas Holt is so funny in that show too. He's he's just the most self centered piece of shit, uh, spoiled little brat and mama's boy. But he you have to love him still, and especially because he's just this endearing foodie. Like setting aside all his atrocious behavior, when it comes to food, he is. It's just, it's the thing he loves most. He doesn't even realize it about himself. Um, anyways, so that is what I'm trying to say here. Context matters. We do want more diversity. I keep saying this, we want more diverse stories. I think it'd be really interesting. You know, people, I'm, I'm often, you know, I've talked about it too, that there there was diversity in like medieval times. Um, there was, it depended on where you were, like in Europe, certain areas like Spain or Italy were much more diverse than Great Britain. But you can tell interesting stories about, you know, the experience of maybe some of these early uh, merchants, travelers, or immigrants throughout Europe in the Middle Ages. Um, that would be more interesting to me than, like, say, putting a having a black woman be a chieftain of a Viking clan in Vikings Valhalla on Netflix. That, to me, is just very strange. But, you know... There are plenty of ways you could have a Viking show 
like be very multicultural. The Vikings traveled everywhere and they brought people back from everywhere too. So there's ways to do this that could be very fascinating and very, you know, very compelling stories uh, without just race swapping. I think that's for me, like it's one thing just to have a diverse cast in a show like The Great. But if you just race swap and show something like Outlander, then you start to you start to whittle away at the actual important story beats, especially when when people do encounter different races and cultures in that context. So, uh, and I mentioned this too. I'm I'm hoping someday we get a really good adaptation of Joe Abercrombie's books, uh, The Blade itself, and and all of his his amazing fantasy novels. But that's another one where I hope the casting is realistic, because. Because that that does play such a role in the books, uh, you know. There, like I've I've mentioned this in the past, but there is a character from like from the Gurkish Empire who is like part demon, but she's dark skinned, and she refers to all the the people in in you know in the wet, in the European style land as pinks. It's her derogatory term for white people, pinks, which I thought always thought was hilarious, and I would hate to lose that. Or, or all the, you know, there is a lot of discussion in those books about sort of xenophobia and, and like how immigrants are, are treated. And you lose that if you just make, if you just make the casting diverse for diversity's sake, rather than have that grounded in some sort of geographical, historical, cultural uh, storytelling. So rambling at this point, I realize it. I'm sorry. I do that. That's what happens when you speak extemporaneously on subjects like this. So. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing, liking, sharing, yada, 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 yada. Peace.